in this lecture we will learn about one probabilistic data structure which is known as bloom filter so this data structure is a randomized one and is used to represent a set of elements and then you can query it with the membership of elements okay so the basic idea is that let's say you have a firewall okay so we have a firewall and where what we want to do is we want to block certain IP address okay so let's say we have IPv6 uh, that is 128 bit addresses and there are 1000 IPv6 address that we need to block okay so what we want so this 1000 IPv6 address this is a set of elements and if you represent it uh, using something like a so you want to represent it using a table a very simple table that is that element present or not then you need how much space you will need so you will need 1000 into 128 bits so this will be the amount of storage that you will need to for this storing these IPv6 address and then you just have to find that okay and then of course plus 1000 bits for finding if they are present or not okay so what happens is now so basically you will have a table where you have the IP addresses and then you will say that okay you have to block it so at least 1000 into 128 bits you need to represent this set of IP address okay and if you represent it using a linked list then you will have so theta of n as the search time okay the search time if you have a linked list so it will be theta of n and insertion will also be theta of n if it is a linked list so now what happens is that of course the first thing is that this space is too big okay even for this just just thousand elements the space is big so what we want when we have a space which is of utmost importance then we use bloom filters okay for membership queries that okay a packet is coming do you want to block it so i will just check if it is there in the set okay so if it is there i will block it but do you need such huge amount of space for that or can we do it with something better so here comes bloom filter that will help us in solving this problem okay so bloom filter is a randomized data structure that is used to represent a set of elements okay and then what will it do it will use very few amount of space very less space and it will answer for you is that element present or not so when you have a packet coming so you can just ask the bloom filter is it there if it is you just block it okay and what it does so you are utilizing very less amount of memory in comparison to the table but everything comes with some trade-off okay and the trade-off here is you will have a bit of false positive okay while answering membership query so here comes a word false positive so what does this mean okay false positive means that sometimes even if some element is not there okay then also this membership query can say that okay it is present okay but it is of course very small so let's try to see now i will introduce bloom filters okay bloom filter is an array of m bits okay so it's an array of m bits and what happens is that in this example let's say that we see so there are m is equal to 25 bits okay and then we have k uniform and independent hash functions in the bloom filter so insertion what happens each element is hashed 
to k bits using uniform and independent hash functions okay so each of the element is hash to one of these bits okay so this hash function will give you from cell number 1 to m okay so that will be its range and n is the number of elements that is inserted that the set has got okay the cardinality of the set is n and k is the number of hash functions okay so let's say here we have m is 25 k is 3 okay so we have elements x y and z so we see that x is hash to bit 2 bit 8 and bit 17 okay similarly y is hash to bit number 9 bit number 13 and bit number 23 okay and now z is mapped to bit 5 13 and 20 okay so one thing is notable here is that z and y both are getting mapped to 13 okay so this collision can take place okay of the cells when you hash something so two elements can collide at some places now what happens now these bits are now set so if i now try to find that okay is x present okay so is x present then we can find from this okay that okay we will hash the value so let's see what is the insertion process first is insert x and element x so what we do we have k hash functions we find h1 x h2 x h3 x till hkx so they will give us some numbers from 1 to m so these bits are set in the bloom filter okay so these bits are set to 1 now when you have to query an element y so what you do so we find the h1 y h2 y till hky we find all the hash of the element y so now if all of these h1 h2 and hk are 1 so what we do we return 1 okay so if all of these bits are set for the hash value of y then we say that okay this element is present otherwise we say that it is not present okay so let's see with some example so we have here a bloom filter with 12 bits okay and we want we have k is equal to three hash functions so we insert two elements okay x1 and x2 so the three cells that are hashed for x1 is 3 5 and 11 so we put 3 5 and 11 as one we set them as one x2 so x2 maps to one 6 and 7 so these are also set to 1 now let's say that this is done now we want to query that is x3 presents okay so for what that what you would do we find the the hashes the hashed bits for x3 and let's say the hash function gives that h1 x3 is 3 h2 okay x3 is 11 and h3 x3 is 7 okay so now what might happen is these hash functions might collide and let's say that h1 x3 is 3 so this is 1 and <coughs> h2 x3 is 11 so that is also already hashed and h3 x3 is 7 which is hashed so even though we never inserted x3 here but because of probability some probability somehow it mapped to all the cells or the bits that were already hashed and hence because of false positive it says even though we had never inserted x3 it says now that x3 is present in the set which is wrong okay but otherwise let's say x4 is not present okay so query x4 so if that element is not present then h1 x4 gives let's say 4 h2 x4 gives 9 and h3 x4 gives 10 so these bits are all so 0 and hence you will say that okay this item x4 is not present so this is the idea behind insertion and querying so now false positive is one of the problem okay and the thing is that we are getting very much space efficiency so let's see that okay when you have to tell these some mathematical expression is needed so let's try to analyze it a bit the bloom filter so what is the false positive rate 
so let's see probability that a cell is not hashed after insertion of an element so what is insertion of an element k bits are hashed okay so when we use uniform and independent hash function so probability that a cell is mapped when one element is inserted is so 1 by m is the probability that a hash function will map to that element probability that a that cell will not not be mapped by that hash function is 1 minus 1 by m therefore now this is the probability that a cell is not mapped by a given hash function what is the probability that it is not ma not mapped by all the k hash function so it is 1 minus 1 by m to the power of k so this is the probability that a cell is not hashed or not set to 1 after insertion of an element now what is the probability that it a cell is not set to 1 after insertion of all the n elements so this to the power of n so 1 minus 1 by m to the power of k n because this should happen n times for all the n elements so hence this will be 1 minus 1 by m to the power of k 1 minus 1 by m to the power of k and this is happening n times so this becomes 1 minus 1 by m to the power of k n now the probability that the cell is set to 1 so this is the probability that a cell is not set to 1 hence the probability cell is set to 1 after insertion of n elements is 1 minus 1 minus 1 by m to the power of k n okay so this is the probability that a cell is not a bit is not set even after a cell is set after insertion of n elements so what is the probability now that we have inserted every element in the bloom filter so what is the probability of false positive so the probability of false positive is that whatever k cells we had the that element was hashed to all of them should be one hence a probability that a cell is set is this so probability that a cell all the k cells are set is this to the power of k okay and we see here this is there and approximately this is equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus k n by m to the power of k okay so this we get so now if you apply a little bit of calculus to it you will find that false positive so this is the false positive rate this one now this will be minimum if k is equal to m by n ln2 okay so this is a very important result for bloom filters so if this is there the false positive is minimum so we will as we discuss the example so let's say that we have a initially we discussed about firewall let's say we have a set of 1000 ipv6 addresses which we want to block okay so if you make a table out of it okay a link list something like that it will require 1000 into 128 bits very simple 1000 elements are there each element requires 128 bits so you need 128 into 10 to the power of 3 bits okay so this is huge value now let us say that we use a bloom filter with k is equal to 3 n is equal to 1000 thousand elements are there from this data we choose that okay let's have m is equal to 10,000 bits we choose to represent 1000 elements okay so here you are using you 1,28,000 okay but here you are just using 10,000 elements so now what happens that we try to we have the formula for the false positive okay so now we have got k is 3 n is 1000 and m is 10000 okay so if you put all these values in this formula of false positive you will get a rate which is just 1.7 percent false positive rate okay and how much you save on the space so we are just using so this number of 10 k of space but here we are using 128k bits okay so if you do this calculation of fraction 
only 7% of beds we are utilizing okay which is very less compared to the original one 